What are you doing? Hey, Emma Lagasse here. Yeah. You guys, you guys must have missed this, huh? You go to Las Vegas and they miss you. you see oh that? yeah! Oh yeah! All right, everybody. Welcome. I won't even ask how everybody's doing tonight. I mean, usually I ask that question, but anyhow, welcome. Emerald Lagasse here, Emerald Live. You know, almost every culture has its very popular veal dish, right? Right? And all right, I just kind of make an example. Nice shirts. The Italians have veal parmesan, right? I mean, it's pretty simple. Germans have, like, Wiener schnitzel. The egg-stuffed Russian veal bird is a classic, right? In New Orleans, we have pan-aid veal. Probably heard of veal cutlets, right? Simple. Ah. I said to myself, Self! Why don't you do some different veal? Get something interesting in there. That's what we're going to do tonight. Some interesting cuts of veal. How about if we start off with some crispy sweetbreads with a white bean ragu? Does that turn you on at all? <laughs> Don't pass out with this one. Some kicked up veal cheeks over creamy polenta. Oh, wait till you see this. Delicious. And then a very, very flavorful, kicked up, underrated cut, the breast of veal. We're gonna stuff it, show you how to roast it. Spicy tomato sauce, creamy pasta. Ah, 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 oh, E. So if it's all right with you, we're gonna kick up veal a few notches right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> Like veal? Yeah. We're gonna kick it up a few notches. All right, listen to this. Before I get started on a little uh, education here, you guys are all right over there in the veal section? <laughs> all right. Give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff in the house. <laughs> well, I'm gonna make this very, very simple now for everybody. First of all, veal, two types. Milk-fed, mostly, grain-fed. Generally, three to six months, four to six months, good age. They never have eaten grass. That's why the, mil the meat, the flesh of the meat is very pink. If it eats a little grain, it'll change. It'll get a little dark pink. So that's it in a nutshell. Staying in the box, of course, the G. Rating, G. <laughs> there are a lot of cuts that are very, very expensive, but there are a lot of cultures that use other cuts of veal. Some of the cuts that I'm going to do that are very delicious and that a huge, huge difference in prices. I wanted to do sweetbreads because I think it's a dish that's starting to come back in a lot of restaurants. The French obviously have a better name for it. Say, re de veau. Sounds better than, I right, having sweetbreads tonight, babe. Just <laughs> <clears throat> so we got to maybe work on the name thing. Most popular, the veal shank, asabuco, delicious, one of my favorite. But it's like you know, close to the trotter, but acceptable in our main culture today. It's a beautiful thing. You got to cook it. Got to cook things. Veal is very, very tender, but there are cuts. The uh, breast of veal that we're going to do, that's what this is right over here. 
You got to do something with it. You got to cook it. You just can't throw that in a pot and think that it's going to like be be all nice and tender. You always look for the stamp too with veal because veal is generally sold with prime veal. Cutlets get a lot of cutlets sometimes. You got a lot of fat. Veal does not age, so veal does not have a lot of fat. So you can't keep veal like beef aged in some room for like, you know, 60 days, 30 days. You just, it doesn't happen because there's very, very little fat on that. These are veal cheeks, which I grew up with fish cheeks. I mean, you, over here, the head of the fish, you know, and the fishermen, they take this part of it out. It's so delicious. If you've never had them, they're absolutely fantastic. And they're fantastic done with veal. Veal tongue is very popular, and these are veal sweetbreads, which are always sold in pairs. But sweetbreads of veal are probably the only cut that you have to do something with. What do I mean by that? You could cut a piece of cutlet here and uh, pound it, saute it very quickly. Asabuco, you got to cook this down for a long time, a couple of hours before that gets tender. Veal cheeks, which I'm going to show you later on. They're absolutely delicious. But sweetbreads, okay, you gotta, you got to do something with them first. You got to cook them, you got to press them, and I want to show you how simple that is. If you get fresh sweetbreads, and we had hundreds and hundreds of requests on that WW dot thing, <laughs> right? I can't believe now all of a sudden, like sweetbreads are like coming back. It's like the Bobby doll again, you know, it's like coming back. You got to start with what is called a court bouillon. Big fancy name, don't worry about it. Here's what it is, an onion. If you want to completely peel it, great. You need a little onion, you quarter it. H2O, that would be water. <laughs> a carrot that you want to rough chop. And then there's another big fancy name called a bouquet garni. What does that mean? What it is, is peppercorns, parsley, or parsley stems, thyme and bay leaves. But you put that in there, and as it simmers, it can really sort of uh, get attached to your meat or whatever you're poaching in that court bouillon. So what you do is you use cheesecloth, and you kind of wrap it up in the cheesecloth so it stays together and it doesn't go everywhere in what you're trying to poach. Okay, you make yourself a little bouquet garni. Woo! Okay. What I like to do, you put that inside also. That's going to flavor it. I like a little bit of salt. Some people will tell you for sweetbreads, they like putting a little bit of vinegar. Now, you soak in cold water your sweetbreads, but they got to be cleaned, okay? It's like steaks. Some steaks have got to be trimmed before you get them home. They've got to be cleaned a little bit because there's this stuff that's attached to them, okay, that you've got to eliminate. Then when you get them cleaned, rinse them out. Then what you do, I have a bouquet gani right over here. Personally, I like to add a little bit of milk to my water when I'm doing sweetbreads, and you're going to see how it'll curdle just a little bit. It'll come back together, and a little white wine, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our clean sweetbreads and we're going to poach these for a couple of minutes. When we come back, I'm going to show you why we poached them, and then we're going to kick it up another notch. Stick around. Back there. Just joining us, we're doing a little unusual cuts of veal. I don't think they're unusual. We started poaching in the court bouillon. Big fancy word, right? <laughs> See, you know, classic cooking court bouillon, poaching liquid. But in Louisiana, it's the only place you, they'll hear it called coubillon. Means nothing. It means fish steamed like in tomato. <laughs> 49 states, and then there's Louisiana. <laughs> 
All right. After they get done poaching in this court bouillon, the next major step that has to happen before that they come out, you want to trim them a little bit. They got to be pressed. I don't mean with an iron. Okay? So let me show you what I mean. Put them on there. You read cookbooks about this stuff. It says, you know, put them on a plate and press them. Same thing like if you make a pate. And, uh, you know, press them with, um, they'll say, uh, you know, a two or three pound weight. Now, I don't know how many people really have got two or three pound weights in their kitchen. <laughs> no, I'm serious. So I ought to tell you a couple of tricks of what I do. Because you will find them. Trick number one. You can get a brick from outside. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Wrap it with plastic wrap and then wrap it with foil. And then you can keep that as a kitchen weight if you've got to press something down. Because then again, how many people have like number 10 cans like in their kitchen? You know, unless they're at like the army barracks or something, you know? <laughs> the other trick that, I, that I'll show you what you do, once you get them out, I just use an identical plate and I put a couple of pounds of butter. Because I always got a couple of pounds of butter in my refrigerator, <laughs> unlike a two pound weight. Maybe it's chocolate for you, I don't know, but you kind of press it like that and then you got to let them cool, okay? Then, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to saute these. I'm going to just heat the pan to medium. Now, I'm going to show you not only how to clean them and slice them after they're cool, but then we're going to dredge them in a little bit of flour. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Let's switch over here now. We're going to do a little white bean ragu for these because I like white beans, that's why. <laughs> but let me show you. You get any kind of beans that are cooked over, extra pasta, rice, whatever, but beans, seriously. There ain't really nothing going on with them. Here's what we're going to do. A little olive oil. <whistles> then we're going to add a little shallot to this. You could use red onion, regular onion. A little salt. <laughs> some pepper. Mmm, smelling good, huh? One or two minutes, you don't want to burn them. Add about 20 cloves of garlic in there, right? <laughs> then we'll add the white beans, one or two tomatoes, you know those Romer kind of tomatoes chopped up? Hey, the seeds don't bother me. If you don't like the seeds, hey, take them out. Ain't gonna offend me. All right, now we've got the ragu working. I thought what would be a great thing with these white beans would be a little thyme. So if you get some fresh thyme, basically you just take the leaves off by stripping the stems like that. Save the stems for your next caught bouillon or bouquet garni, whatever. A little bit of thyme. Thyme is strong, so you want to make sure that you don't add too, too much. So we'll add a little bit of thyme like that. Chopped up, add that inside of the ragu. And then I've got some veal stock, or maybe you got some veal broth, beef broth, whatever you got. I'm going to add some of this in there now, just to make it happier, you see? Now those beans are getting happy. If you want to add Creole mustard, you could add Creole mustard in there. Add whatever you want. I'm just keeping it simple. All right. Back to the sweetbread land. See, that's, you got them pressed now. See what happens? Keep them in the ice box. You do this the day before. When you're ready, because they, these were really cleaned beautifully, you slice them sort of like little nuggets, like a little bias like this. You see that, guys? Then, when you're ready, you can do this ahead of time. When you're ready, We'll get our pan, a little regular oil, enough to saute them in. Eh, we'll add a little more. <laughs> What's a little oil amongst friends? Take your flour. Kick the flour up a couple of notches with some essence, you know what I mean? Yeah.
Then what you do is you just dredge them like this in the flour, these little nuggets. Now, there are other ways that you can do this, too. Sometimes what we do is, at the restaurant, once we've, you know, you work with these a little bit, sometimes in the restaurant, we just kind of bread them and we like fry them like little nuggets. Whew, tasty little devils. All right, you see what I'm doing here now? I'm dredging them in the seasoned flour. So I don't know where you buy your flour. I buy mine. It don't come seasoned. <laughs> and then we're going to saute these to their golden brown. Our white bean ragu is getting really happy over there. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this dish. And then another notch. Stick around. <laughs> everybody. No, it's like, it's like wondering why every time I come in, next morning I come in and check it out, I'm missing more and more pans. <laughs> wondering why. He's got like a kicked up set of all clad like all over the place, you know, a couple of walks. <laughs> Those of you joining us, we've got our little nuggets of sweetbreads. Nice golden brown after dredging them, and they're seasoned. We're going to take them out of the oil right now. Just kind of put them on a little paper towel or a little clean cloth. I like them crispy, too. Like, these are not overcooked, but these, I like that little, that's why I like to dredge them inside the seasoning like that. Especially those little guys like that, them little yum-yums is what I call them. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just fill your pocket with them. Just walk down the street. <laughs> Subways, what are you having? I'm having a little yum-yum of sweetbreads. <laughs> How about you? How are those raisinets tasting? <laughs> All right. Keep that off the stove right now, and then I'm going to move over these beans. Looking good, those beans, huh? Here's where you ask yourself, you taste those beans right now, you ask yourself, you know, you got to taste them. That's the whole key. It's like... <laughs> I'm glad you're as excited about these beans as I am there, ladies. My kind of girl. You're like, it's a common sense. Like, the brain just goes off. Does it need more salt? How much more pepper? You know? Do you want to kick it up another notch? You know what I mean? You could add... You could add, like, a little Worcestershire sauce to it, right? You could kick it up with uh, some hot sauce, right? You can just kind of, bam! You can just give it a little bam like that. Just, all right. Here's what we're going to do. Look, I'm going to put some parsley in here. Hilda's happy now. Put some chives in there. And then I'm just going to add just a tiny little bit of butter to this thing. Just kind of the texture. Oh, it's just... It's just a good thing. Look, you melt it in there to get all nice and creamy. Oh, you see how happy they are right now? All right. Now, how I would finish this is basically some bean ragu like this on the bottom. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> see, then you just, like, kind of drive Miss Daisy a little bit, just... <laughs> She's happy now. Then you take a little bit of these nuggets, crispy sweetbread nuggets like that, 
Oh, yeah, babe. That's about the perfect appetizer portion right there, at least for me. Garnish with a little bit of thyme, right? Oh, yeah, babe. Little green onions like that. There you have it, crispy sweet bread. All right. I'm putting you on the spot. Wait one second. One second. I got a little skillet here. You could use nonstick too. I'm gonna add some bacon in here if you don't mind. Wait, wait, I'm gonna show you why. A little bit of olive oil, just a tiny bit, okay? Relax, it's gonna feed like 30 people. All right, look, we just wanna kinda render this bacon down. I'll be back. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot because you've never had sweetbreads. Sweet All right, so have a little, take one, little beans. Your friend over here, you guys together? For a long Still time. want to be together? Make sure you get us some. Make some friends. Make sure you got neighbors. Then I'm going to come back and see if you like them. You can be to totally honest. Okay, listen. Veal cheeks. I know you're looking at me like you are out of your mind. They're a beautiful thing. Look, these veal cheeks, you trim the fat, your butcher can do that, you have them. Season them with a little essence like this, because I don't know where you get your cheeks. Where I get my cheeks, they don't come seasoned, baby. All right. We're gonna take, we're gonna take this crispy bacon out of the pot right now. Fairly crispy, at least. Doesn't really bother me if some of it stays in there. I don't want it to burn. This is pretty lean bacon. Take the bacon out of there, right? All right, now, we got some of that oil. We're gonna get you guys some sweetbreads in a second. See the oil right there? Looks like enough. If it's not, don't panic. You don't have to call like 911 right now. Look. Just add a little bit of oil, see? It's not like a rocket ship or anything. Now, you take the seasoned cheeks, dredge them inside of the seasoned flour, okay? Seasoned flour. We got a little essence in there. We're going to take the cheeks. When we come back, I'm going to show you another knot. Stick around! <laughs> the Guica. It's the Guica. It's the Guica drum right there. Unbelievable. Sounds great, Doc. Thank you. This is sounding pretty good, too. You want to get them really good and brown like that on that one side. That's what helps with the flour, you see? Then I just turned them over. Okay? Now, they look kind of dry to you right now. Trust me. We're going to make them so happy. <laughs> When you get to this stage right here, about four or five minutes on each side, I'm gonna add that bacon back in here now to finish crisping up. Oh yeah, baby. The pork fat thing. Once that bacon starts, see, they're already smiling, you can't see them, but and we've only just added bacon in here. Now, once that happens, we're gonna add some onion. We're gonna add some carrots. If you wanna add celery, you can add celery. You can add bell pepper if you want. Then I'm gonna start sauteing those vegetables out, but them vegetables ain't seasoned. So I gotta season them a little bit for them to get happy. Basic, little foundation. We'll just add a little bit of salt like this. We can always come back and re-season. 
four or five minutes after the vegetables start getting a little soft, we're going to add ah, some whole thyme, a couple of sprigs, add a bay leaf. We we'll add about 15 cloves of chopped garlic in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take an assortment of mushrooms chopped up, whatever you can get. I had some shiitake sliced. I got some oyster. Those are cultivated. I got these black trumpet mushrooms, a couple of chanterelles, whatever you can find. And what you do is... You add the mushrooms right over this. I'm going to show you what happens. See, we're making like a trap right now. That's what it is, see? Can't see anything now. It's like a trap. See? No more veal cheeks. It's like hide and seek. <laughs> now, we're going to season the mushrooms because they weren't seasoned. <laughs> and then, we're going to make them really happy. I'm going to use some really killer Madeira wine. You could add sherry. Red wine's fine. There's something about this Madeira, though, with these veal cheeks. You know what I'm saying? So we just add a little bit of Madeira in there. Ah, you know. Some for that, some for me. <laughs> then, we we'll take a little bit of that veal broth, dock chicken broth, beef broth, whatever you have, veal. We'll add that over it. Bring it up to a boil, you simmer it. Lower the heat. Covered. It's kind of a covered, uncovered thing. You want it uncovered for a little bit of time because you want that evaporation. But you want to cover it sometime because you want to hold in the condensation so that, you know, you got some liquid left. Okay? You with me on that? All right. So that's what it looks like after about an hour with the half-covered, half-uncovered trick. You see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want these super tender. Oh, let me tell you. These are unbelievable. Oh, I'm excited too, I gotta tell you that. <laughs> so we're gonna let that on a simmer right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Meanwhile, over here, I've got some milk with some butter. We're gonna start some polenta. Oh yeah, babe. Can you imagine those veal cheeks with polenta? You can always add, but it's very hard. So look, you wanna just get it in there, get it, stir it. Why people get turned off of polenta is because they never cook it enough. You know, it's not like instant stuff. You gotta cook it. It's the same thing with grits. It tastes like a grit. <laughs> well, it tastes like a grit if you don't cook it. What do you expect for it to taste like? Right? So you gotta cook it. So I'm gonna cook this nice and slow for a little bit. Keep simmering our cheeks. This is that veal breast thing, right, earlier? that we talked about, that's the whole breast. In a butcher shop, you need to get a piece, a half, or whatever, which is what I did, and I told him to take off this bone, but he didn't obviously listen well. <laughs> I love that. So we'll finish his job. Now, keep that stock. Hey, there's veal ribs in there. What you want to do, if it's really thick, you got to clean this up a little bit. Like, look, this is all fat. I mean, be real with yourself, right? <laughs> Plus, that guy should have trimmed some of this stuff off. <laughs> but I know who's paying for it, if you catch my drift. 
Yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up and bring it back to him tomorrow. <laughs> Show him who. So after you get this all trimmed up, we gotta kind of tenderize this a little bit. So you, if he's a nice butcher, he'll, uh, he'll actually jacquard or machine this for you. But if not, <clears throat> you have to do it yourself. You get this meat mallet, and we're gonna start pounding this down a little bit, pressing it about a quarter of an inch. When we come back, I'm gonna show you this kicked up stuffed breast of veal and some cheeks. Stick around. That's it. Welcome back, Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. All right, now that we've woken up half the neighborhood, now you gotta do this, because it's gotta get tender. Use a little plastic wrap like that. The butcher can't do it for you. Another machine that we were talking about is a machine called a jacquard. It's actually this little frame, They're not that expensive, and when you press down on it, they're very dangerous though, so you know, it's not like a thing you wanna be messing around with. But when you press down on it, actually a bunch of little kind of miniature knives, if you will, comes and it tenderizes it very quickly like that. It's called a jacquard. Or like I did, you're going to have to pound it out for, you know, 15 minutes or so. Take your frustrations out. That's what I did. I'm ready to go now. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Back to Polenta world. Look, you don't have to call the polenta police if like this thing starts getting thick on you. Add a little bit of milk. Add a little bit of water little love, you know, don't worry about it, okay? Then, when it gets smooth in your palate and it's ready, then what you should do is taste it for seasoning. That's the consistency, basically. You see how it's fluff like that? That it should be. Taste it. What does it need? A little more salt. Pepper. Right at the end, I like to finish mine with a little butter and some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. <laughs> then, you take a little bit of polenta like this. See that? Now, in New Orleans, we'd serve this with grits. Only problem is with grits, you can only get about $1.99 for them. With polenta, you can get $29.95. <laughs> so it's wherever you want to go with it. Now, I'm going to use, I'll use a spoon, why not? Now, look how tender these cheeks are. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cheeks like that with the mushrooms. Oh yeah, put a, put a little bit of that between your cheeks and gum, right? <laughs> That ought to fix you out like that. See, what a nice serving like that, huh? Wipe it up, nice, nice. Maybe a little bit of chives, a little more Parmesan cheese, a little more essence to kick it up. And there you have it, okay, folks? Fantastic. All right, you guys, start going. You got some friends over here. If you need some extra forks, look. Got some forks right there, okay? Yours coming up. Now! Back to the uh, breast of veal, we pounded it out. Watch this. I'm gonna take my spice, that essence, and season the inside of the, oh, whatever spice you like, salt, cayenne at least. All right, now look. Veal force me. what is that? Hey, if you took a couple of those cheeks or stew meat of veal or beef, right? Did the same thing like that? took it out of the stock, put it in a food processor, you'd have a veal force meat. Okay? Why? Because it's my show. That's why I can do that. <laughs> I'm having some veal force meat. If you don't want, you don't have to. Now watch what you're going to do. Yeah, let's add it all. 
Delicious. I'm going to tell you. You get a little spatula. They haven't stole it. Okay. We'll use this kind. Spread it on your veal that's pounded out. You with me so far, folks? Yeah. Good. Now, watch this. See? Portuguese ingenuity. You get some pancetta. If you don't have pancetta, no problem. Use bacon. Little pancetta. We're going to put some of that on there. That's going to keep the veal breast from staying. It's going to be nice and moist, you know? Okay? As much as you like. Generally, after six, seven pounds, I stop. But anyhow. <laughs> All right, now we got that. Now here's the trick. You got to roll it up. So what you do is you fold it like this, press it, then roll it up gingerly. Don't panic. See how this one here just got a little blowout? <laughs> hey, that happens. We're not like flopping turkeys here. All right, now look, we're going to take some butcher's twine, about so big, come under. We're going to start tying this up. We're going to rub the outside with olive oil, essence, and we're going to roast this thing. When we come back, I'm not going to show you not only this roast, simple sauce for fettuccine. Oh, just wait. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Back in. <laughs> Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. I melted a little butter in this pan. I'm going to add a few cloves of chopped garlic in here, a little bit of chives. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite pasta sauces, very simple. You take a little bit of cream. Relax, it's going to serve a lot of people, folks. All right? Got to season it. Salt, pepper. How's the cheeks? Great, huh? How's the polenta? It's done. All right. See that? We're going to let this reduce, and then we're going to add some Parmesan cheese. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, I started this delicious, not cacciatore, but a kind of a spicy tomato sauce. All right? Now, 375 degrees for about 45, 55 minutes. It's got to have an internal temperature of about 140. And I uh, would suggest that you uh, invest in one of those, um, you know, those thermometer things. All right. Yeah, it's a good thing. Now, you're supposed to let that rest. What does that mean? Well, when you do these kind of roasts like this, come on, work with me, baby. Work with me. Okay? Don't work with me. Portuguese ingenuity. Watch. Perfect. Why it's doing that, I'll tell you right now, is because it's getting, you see that? It's getting all nice and caramely. Okay? So you got to let this rest a little bit. I'm going to just kind of give it a few snips here. Let it rest. That's what will keep it together. And I'll show you this in one second. Looks good, huh, Rhoda? You like that, huh? Watch this, we're gonna just, oh, take that one off. All right, you get the program, right? Now, you can either bring it to the table like such, or here's what we're gonna do. Add in the cheese, cooked pasta, more salt, bam! <laughs> Little pepper. Should we make it like a family dish? All right, watch. We're just going to take the pasta like this, warm it up. A few slices of the old roast. I'm going to show you this. Oh, look at that. You see the force meat like that? So here's what we're going to do now. 
It's ready to go. Take that off. All right. Take the pasta, heat it really good, nice and cheesy, bottom of the bowl, right? Veal roast, no strings, a little on the side. I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you for being here tonight. I hope you got it. See you tomorrow, everybody.